<laughs> Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this new session, informative session for our members on your taxes in 2021. Uh, we have had such a fabulous educational series uh, going on here, and I'm really happy to have this one join the lineup. Uh, before we get started with our speaker, I do want to remind you of a few of our seminars which are coming up. Medicare and UCSD health care plans is one of the most important seminars we offer during the year, uh, where Deborah Wells drills down to what into what Medicare covers and what you're going to be getting from your UCSD health care plans. So please be sure to join us for that. That seminar is on April 7th. All of our seminars are at noon. The very next day on the 8th, we have a state planning with Heidi Klippel. And then moving into the month a little bit more, on the 14th, we have real estate options for seniors with Ron Greenwald. What that seminar deals with is you may have had a bigger home when you had children at home. You may not want to have such a big home. You may want to think about living, um, moving into a senior community. You may just want to downsize to a one bedroom apartment. There's all that stuff to pack up. Uh, they're you know, looking at the different choices. Ron Greenwald is your expert who will guide you through all dealing with all of those questions. And then um, a little further in the month, we have a brand new seminar that we are adding to our senior seminars, and that is called Physical Property Management for Seniors Who Are Aging in Place. We have a property management expert, Steve Zatarain, who is joining us for that event. And that is for a lot of people, you want to um, age in place in your own home, but at a certain point in time, you no longer want to deal with thinking about who's cutting the grass, who comes if there's something that breaks down, appliance issues, electricity, plumbing, et cetera. And uh, Steve is going to give you the whirlwind tour of how to handle property management centralized through one, fam uh, one group. And uh, although Steve himself is not of the UCSD family, he is through his spouse, who works for uh, the Morris Cancer Center. So today we are here to talk about taxes and we have an expert with us. Hedy Jafari is an enrolled agent licensed to practice before the IRS. He's worked for 25 years as a financial manager for UCSD and more than 20 years as a tax accountant. Let's welcome now Hedy Jafari. Thank you very much. Uh, it's so nice to be you guys and see some uh, friends. Uh, Sandra, I love you. So, oh my God. So it's uh, the, the best opportunity for me to see my colleagues at UCSC. I uh, really appreciate that. I was disconnected uh, with the, 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 due to the COVID. So, and uh, I didn't know, uh, I just, forgot to pay my membership and I was lost. Then I realized after a few months that, oh, I don't get any email from Susan anymore. So Susan was active, <laughs> uh, send an email, you know that, uh, 10 emails every day. So anyway, <laughs> so I'm happy that I'm reconnected. And uh, I'm gonna share my screen with you guys uh, soon. Uh, the only thing that, uh, let me just go and share a screen. I don't know how much, uh, let's just see, uh, share screen, but okay, I need to change this one. We can see your screen now, Heavy. Okay, so uh, I don't know, uh, I'm trying uh, to be efficient, so my client is coming at one, uh, another retired uh, uh, from UCSD, she is coming to finish her taxes, I'm, uh, I'm trying to be, uh, efficient to finish everything. I don't know how much I, this presentation, I did it in uh, February for one group of people in town. Uh, it, um, a really huge group, uh, group of uh, 150 people, 250 people. And then I did it last week also for another group. So I'm hoping that the, this presentation is gonna be helpful to you guys too, because it's a different group. I can see young, uh, uh, 
all of the young people uh, on the screen, but uh, hopefully it uh, can help you, uh, helpful for you. Otherwise, you can ask my question, your, your question, uh, ask me questions and uh, that applies to you. But as you know, and Susan mentioned that, so uh, I retired from UCSC two years ago. Uh, and then uh, I'm doing taxes since 2000. Almost uh, this year is gonna be 21st year. And I'm an enrolled agent, enrolled agent, as much as uh, if you don't know about that, uh, enrolled agent, uh, CPAs, they do taxes also, but CPAs, they are mostly 90%, they are involved in auditing, uh, not uh, doing taxes, but they do taxes. Enrolled agent is a license uh, uh, that you, I, I took the test two days, uh, I remember in 2003, uh, morning in the afternoon, uh, the day, the same thing, almost really tough. I'm happy that I passed that one. I'm licensed. I can practice before IRS. It means that if you get audited and you don't know what to do, you just call me, Hedy. Can you go to the audit? Uh, can you prepare this one? If it gets rolled, if it's going on and they don't accept it, you send letter, they don't accept it, and then you can ask for going to the uh, uh, tax court, uh, not the uh, normal court. It's a tax court, and you can tell me that uh, you can tell them that Hedy is coming and uh, uh, is going to be my agent over there. They accept because I have their license. So this is my information that you can have. Uh, you're always welcome uh, uh, to text me, to call me, to email me for your questions. I'm open. Question is, uh, uh, is always free. I, I never charge someone that, okay, you took my time. You need to pay me. This is the minimum thing that I can pay to my uh, community that I work with them for 25 years. So uh, starting that one, so, but uh, be patient if um, some of this information, because it's a general information, it's regarding one point, uh, something in 1.9 uh, trillion uh, uh, things that passed uh, two weeks ago, maybe it doesn't apply to you because it's a different age uh, group that I'm with. Okay. In this, uh, okay, I, uh, I wanted to uh, talk about recovery rebate or stimulus payment. Of course, unemployment, maybe it doesn't apply to you guys. Payroll uh, protection uh, program, rental income and loss, COVID-19 related uh, relief and retirement plan. And uh, some uh, touching, I'm touching a little bit about 1031 exchange. Uh, maybe this one applied to you guys more than uh, other subjects because uh, if you have rental property and you wanted to change it, uh, then uh, a little bit talking about that, uh, how you can uh, skip taxes, capital gain taxes. Excuse me, Hedy. Um, sure. Sorry for the interruption, but um, your screen is frozen at the moment. Um, you, don't, you cannot see the screen? Yes. Okay. Um, could, you, could you stop sharing your screen and then reshare it? Um, yeah, I think that would help. Can you okay. see? Yes, now we can see them. Did you see, did you see my information? I don't think they did. No, no. Um, okay. here, give us a chance to write that down. Okay, yeah. And then actually, if you'll put that in the chat, Ishel, copy yeah. that into the chat. I'll write it down on the chat too. Yeah, or my email is uh, at UCSD was H Jafari, H Jafari at UCSD.edu. That ho I'm hoping that uh, my emails are going to be forwarded to my Gmail. That was the plan for the first year that I retired. But anyway, uh, these are my information. Sorry about that. Thank you very much for telling me. Uh, anyway, so are you ready to move on? Okay. The next one is the title that I talked. I was talking that I, I gave pre presentation to different groups, uh, recovery rebate. Uh, you know that last year at this time, uh, government passed a stimulus, uh, the first stimulus, the second stimulus in, came in December. The first one came in April, May, uh, this time last year. Uh, the second one came end of December and then it came later on. So I'm gonna talk about that. I'm gonna talk about unemployment. Maybe it doesn't apply to you guys. Uh, payroll protection program, again, some just, I'm gonna go fast and just give 
the most of the time for to you guys to ask question uh, rental income and losses and covid uh, retirement plan and 1031 exchange so yes the first one that uh, maybe uh, uh, some of people they got it the first one was 1200 for people uh, making under 75000 and it, it it used to drop until 99000 whoever made more than 99000 as a single person uh, was not qualified uh, but under 75000 they got 1200 between they got it 1000 900 800 based on their income adjusted gross income adjusted gross income uh, for married filing jointly was uh, two 2400 150 the limit it was up to uh, under 150 the full uh, more than 198000 nothing and, and head of household it was uh, income limit was 112000 and 146000 and it was 500 for each child under 17 from 16 years old or 17 and younger uh, the first and uh, uh, the second one was end of December, uh, beginning of January, and it was $600 uh, for each adult and child, again, child under uh, 16 years old uh, that it came. It came in different uh, uh, ways. Uh, I saw that one, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I was not, we were not, my family were not, uh, was not eligible for that, but I saw people, some people, they got direct deposits, some uh, people, they got a check, and some people got a debit card uh, uh, and, and was loaded with money. The third one started a few weeks ago. I hope that you have received it. And that was the plan. Uh, if you remember discussion in the house, is my screen is sharing, okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Okay. And uh, if you remember the discussion uh, before between Democrat and Republican, $2,000, no, it's not enough. Uh, uh, 600 is not enough, 2,000. Finally, it's got approved another addition of 1,400 that started, came, uh, came out uh, from two weeks ago, and, but they changed the uh, income limit. Um, for single is under 75, still 1,400, but more than 80,000, nothing. Family, uh, might find jointly 150,000 uh, full or 2,400 or 2,800 more than 160. In this 160,000 was before was 200,000. So uh, over 160, nothing. And but the good thing with this one was uh, for everybody. Uh, before the, there is no uh, age limit for children. So whoever was on the tax uh, would get uh, 1,400 uh, per person. So I don't know how much I need to talk about this one. Unemployment, uh, normally in general, for your information, unemployment is taxable to the federal, is not taxable to the state. Fortunately, uh, we guys, uh, the UCSC employee, the, uh, <laughs> we never got uh, uh, unemployment. Uh, we are lucky that we are always employed until we retire. But it was uh, it's four hundred fifty thousand per week from the state. Uh, but government supplemented that uh, last year six hundred to help people. And uh, the money, as I said, the general rule. Uh, is that unemployment was taxable to the state, to the federal, not taxable to the state. Uh, with the stimulus of $1.9 trillion, uh, they said, let's just give them a break. First, 10,200 of unemployment is tax-free for federal and for state. So uh, if your household, uh, if it's, even if a single person who was on unemployment, no matter, it doesn't have married, single, or head of household, if the household is under 150,000 AGI, uh, 10,200 automatically is gonna be deducted from unemployment. This one, another thing, I don't know, it's uh, maybe the to, to grandchildren or uh, relatives, um, they change that, uh, that's, child tax credit is $2,000 $2, every year. And people should wait until they file their taxes to get this credit. They change this one, and kind of uh, like Scandinavian country, Canada, France, uh, because I live in Sweden for seven years and we used to get $100, $100 check every month per child. 
So, and there was nothing on the tax. So we use automatically to get that one. Now they are increasing uh, the child tax credit from 2000 to 3,600 for children under 600, six years old, and 3,000 for each child between six to 17. We are blessed that we, with the pandemic, we couldn't see, we couldn't feel the pressure, but there are people, there are families that they ki their kids, they depends on food just on, at school. So that's the reason that the government uh, on that 1.9 trillion said, we need to increase child tax credit and we need to send this one monthly. Families shouldn't wait a year to get this credit. That's why beginning July 1st, not right now, beginning July 1st, government is gonna send check per child. Uh, they are gonna divide it monthly. And uh, it's, if 3,600 is gonna be uh, 300 a month per child and uh, send it monthly to the family that they are eligible, which is a good thing. Uh, and then I don't know if you uh, heard about credits, for example, on your taxes, some kind of credit they are refundable some kind of credits are non-refundable. What does it mean? Non-refundable means if you have a credit, for example, you put solar on your roof. If you say that it is not refundable, it means that if you owe taxes $3,000, if your tax is $3,000, you can offset of the solar credit up to 3,000. If your solar credit is 5,000, you, you are losing $2,000 is non-refundable. It can bring your taxes to zero, but if it's more credit, you cannot use it. They call it non-refundable. Child tax credit was also portion refundable, portion non-refundable. It could bring your taxes to zero. If you, uh, you had more credit, you couldn't use it. But now they are changing every, all the child tax credit is refundable. It means that if you have 5,000 child tax credit, it can bring your taxes to zero, and then they're gonna pay the rest to you. That's the meaning of refundable. And as I, as I mentioned, pay, uh, payments is gonna start July 1st. Again, maybe it doesn't apply to you. Uh, it, it was applied to many people that they got it last year, government uh, started to give loan to the companies and they uh, the, uh, the name was they, I'm sure that you heard about that PPP loan, payroll protection program. They government wanted to take people out of unemployment. They said, okay, your company, your coffee store, your shopping store is shut down because you don't have money. We give you money and as a loan, this loan, one, for example, 150,000. The purpose of this loan that call your employee that they are on leave or furlough and they are applying for unemployment, bring them back, pay salary to them. If you bring them back and pay salary, we are gonna forgive the loan. You're not gonna pay it back, it's a grant. If you spend money for uh, payroll, if you spend money for the mortgage or rent of your business, those are expenses that are gonna be forgiven. Loan is gonna be forgiven. Otherwise, you need to pay it back and the interest is 1% for 30 years that the government was, government was helping. Then now it's a time that people that they receive that one, they need to pay to, to fill out the application. The, the loan was pay, uh, payment was through the banks that you uh, had an account, a business account with them. Now it's a, a period is open that you can apply, submit the documents to see if it can be forgiven or if they said, no, it's not gonna be forgiven. You need to pay us back 30 years, 1% and you pay the government back. So these are the expenses that we, they, could, uh, they can deduct. So benefits to uh, salary to the, pay, uh, pay, uh, to the employee benefits, rent, water, telephone, internet, all of those expenses are acceptable. Uh, okay. There was another issue that you know that uh, when we have <clears throat> a retirement plan, uh, you, you cannot touch your retirement. I mean, 
uh, personal retirement, you cannot pension. You cannot uh, touch that one before 59 and a half. If you're under 59 and a half and you withdraw money, uh, it's gonna go back to your uh, income that year. And you are also, you need to pay penalty 10% to the federal, 2.5% to the state. Uh, they made a, a proposition that, okay, uh, if you withdraw money and it's COVID related, we are gonna waive, uh, okay, if so, uh, we are gonna waive uh, the penalty and uh, you don't need to pay, but it's gonna go to your taxes, uh, to your income for your taxes. Yeah, are they, uh, hands are, you mean that you have questions? There was extra question on the tax, on uh, tax 2020 recovery uh, uh, page. Uh, was at, is asking whoever didn't do it, asking that how much you got because when when they paid us recovery last year, they said okay if you have filed your 2020 2019 we are gonna go with that one. If you since the tax was extended until July, if you haven't done it, we are gonna go with 2018 uh, taxes and we paid. So it was paid based on 2018 or 2019, but the reality it should be based on 2020 because what happened, COVID happened in 2020, okay? So there is an extra page on your taxes for 2020 uh, when you do your taxes, if you are doing yourself. It's, ask, it's gonna ask you that, it's gonna based on your 2020 income, it's gonna ask you, how much did you get the first one? And if you were not qualified and you got the 1,000 based on 2020, you are qualified, you are gonna get $200 credit on your taxes. How much did you get the second one? Definitely for this 1,400, if you got it 1400 less than 1400 next year at this time there is going to be on your taxes question again okay because it's going to be based on 2021 income in 2022 when you do your taxes there is going to be a question that how much did you get it and then you are going to put it that i got it for example $500 based on 2021 if you are qualified for the difference you are going to get a credit on your taxes on 2021 so, but I remember when uh, uh, President Biden got elected uh, in this in November, I was giving a presentation and someone asked me that, what is Biden's plan about taxes? And I said, nobody knows first, but in general, we know that he's a Democrat. Trump is a Republican. Okay, there should be a change. But we know, as much as we know that the, the tax change in end of 2017 and beginning and it applied to 2018 and they changed it, the state tax 11 point, to 11.800 million, they changed that one. If that, that's, those uh, taxes valid until 2025, they put a date on that. It was oh. starting 2018 to 2025. If my understanding is if Biden wants to change that one, House can approve it, but he needs 75 senator to two thirds of the Senate should approve it. For, the, for any law that passed previously to change it, it should be changed by two thirds of the Senate. And unfortunately or fortunately, depends on who is uh, looking that, uh, uh, they don't have it. They don't have it. Uh, and I don't think so. I'm not going to get to the polity. Uh, but if, if Democrats can get to two thirds of Senate, then they can reverse any uh, loss. Uh, so, but don't worry. If your state is over 12, 13 million, so I, I hope that you are living uh, over 100 years. So, no, it's not, it hasn't been changed. I haven't heard anything. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, the age that we are is not, uh, there is no penalty, but if you were younger and you, there was penalty, you can skip it because uh, it was COVID related, or even you can uh, put it, uh, you don't need to put, if you withdraw, for example, $9,000, you don't need to put all the 9,000 on 2020 taxes, you can split it in three years. I said, okay, I'm going to report 3,000 in 2020, 3,000 2021, and then 3,000. Or even you can say that, no, I withdraw money because of the COVID I needed. I wanted to pay it back. Then you can pay it back that money and it's not going to impact your uh, tax income. This is about the penalty that I was talking that, that and paying back or reporting in three years. So let me just see what is, okay, I have time. 
Okay, let me just maybe this one is more interesting for you guys. Uh, as uh, people that maybe you have uh, investment property. You know that when you have investment property, uh, when, if you sell it, uh, you need to pay capital gain. And capital, capital gain for investment property is long-term capital gain. It can be 0%, 15%, or 20%, the maximum. So the, the capital gain is not, long-term capital gain is not, Dinner income, and uh, it's going to be taxed differently. So, uh, and depends on how much other income you have, that's uh, got to trigger 0%, 15%, or 20%. Now, you have an investment property, let's say, and you decide to sell that one, you have two options. One is that you bought it for 100,000, you're selling for 500,000, you're going to have 400,000 capital gain. 20%, you have to pay uh, 80,000 tax on that. Or you say, no, I wanted to sell this one and upgrade that one and to buy another property, investment property. That 1031 exchange comes to your uh, calculation. 1031 exchange says that you can sell your investment property and you have six months, within six months, you can buy another property, investment property, and it should be the minimum of the selling price. You bought the uh, first, uh, you, um, again, the same example, you bought the 100,000 property, you had it for 20 years, now you're selling 500,000. Your capital gain is 400,000. You said that I wanted to skip that one, and I don't want to pay this one right now, I'm gonna buy another investment property and rent it out. The minimum that you need to buy the new property should be 500,000 because you sold it for 500,000. Forget about expenses, I'm not gonna to get to the detail, but imagine that you sold it for 500, then you buy another one, 500 or more. It cannot be less than 500. You buy another property, 600, whatever, then and start renting that one. You are not going to pay any capital gain tax. You're going to skip that one. And there's not going to be capital gain involved. They call it 1031 exchange. In two years, if you decide that, oh, I'm tired of the investment, I'm going to sell it. You bought it for 600, you sell it for, say that uh, the housing market is crazy like this one. <laughs> So you sell it for 700 and you decide not to buy another property, get out of that one. Then you're gonna pay capital gain tax. Your capital gain tax is gonna be 700 selling price minus 100,000, the first one that you bought it, you are gonna have uh, 600,000 capital gain. So this is how it, it works. Uh, you just skip taxes, but your base for the new one that you buy, the base is going to be 100,000 if you buy 500. If you buy 500, exactly the same money, you pay that one. So your base is going to be 100, the previous one that you sold. This is how you skip taxes on capital gain. But if you sell it, you need to pay, uh, you need to calculate the basis was 100,000 because Reality, you paid 100,000, you made gain five, uh, up to 500, 400,000, 500. So at six, instead of 600, then your capital gain is going to be 500,000. Hopefully, uh, I explained it uh, clearly for you guys. So 1031 exchange is more uh, kind of taxes that applies to people that we are retired. And uh, myself, I do a, a investment property in La Jolla that I uh, rented for years. And so, of course, I'm not going to sell it until uh, uh, leave it to the kids uh, and state is going to be tax free. But if I wanted to change it, I need to go through to 1031 exchange. One of my clients asked me, or audience that I had presentation asked me that, can I, uh, if I have investment property, can I sell it uh, uh, and 31 exchange and go myself and live in that one? 
uh, I said the rule IRS rules that uh, you, if, if you want to skip capital gain tax, it should be investment to investment. It cannot be investment to uh, owner occupy. Uh, but uh, you can go, you can sell it, you can go and buy a new one, you go move in yourself. Uh, because the, the question was, uh, because that uh, person was coming from San Francisco and he said that I wanted to invest in property here and buy another one, do a 10 one exchange in San Diego. Can I move in myself? I said, okay, go and move in uh, yourself. Normally they said that it should be another investment property, <clears throat> but it's better to rent it at least for six months uh, to not to trigger the question from IRS. Uh, and IRS is gonna see, oh, the rental moved from San Francisco to San Diego. It's a one year or six months, at least six months. Then you move in, in self, yourself, maybe you can skip that capital gain taxes. That was somehow that if you can do it. Uh, that is the end of, I know that uh, Suzanne has a question. I, that's almost uh, bringing to end of uh, my presentation. Uh, I wish because it was a short time, I, uh, I told uh, Suzanne that I can do a uh, presentation, but I have, and, uh, uh, since my email was uh, not started until two days ago, I thought that uh, maybe uh, I'm not going to do this one, but I promise you next year I'm going to go, uh, the presentation is going to be more um, presentable for, for the age group, so uh, that it is more uh, I don't know, our life is more, uh, at least mine is simpler than when I retired. <laughs> it's better and simpler. Uh, hopefully uh, everyone uh, just got some information, useful information from this presentation, but I promise you <coughs> that you can call me, ask me for any question. But of course, uh, as I said, it's a question, email, uh, all uh, uh, fee free. But if you wanted to come here, consultation, normally there is a fee for that. Okay, Suzanne, uh, I'm ready for your question. 